Welcome to the Community for Conscious Living weekly live broadcast. Today is Sunday, December 30th of 2018. The Community for Conscious Living is a community dedicated to personal transformation for universal harmony, healing the planet by making inspired changes in ourselves and in our daily lives to create a sustainable environment and a peaceful world. Now today, our question, the question is to resolve or not to resolve, (laughs) to make the resolutions or to not make the resolutions. And one of the questions that comes up every year is, is it spiritual to make a New Year's resolution? So my question for you is, do you make resolutions? Do you make New Year's resolutions? And I tell you what, if you're on the phone If you do make New Year's resolutions, I'm not going to call on you or unmute you or anything, but if you do make New Year's resolutions, if you um, have a practice of that, press star two if you would. And if you're in the, on the webcast, if you could just put a yes or no in there, I'd greatly appreciate it. I just kind of like to get a little feel. Okay, good. Okay, excellent. We have a few. Yay. You know, I know every year I I, thank you. Um, Every year, you know, there's the the great debate. Do we make resolutions or not make resolutions? Have you just given up on them because they don't work? Or are you of that mindset of, well, shouldn't I just love myself the way I am? And, you know, if I'm on this spiritual journey, And I'm on this spiritual quest to be one with God and to be one with spirit, to surrender to the will of the source of unconditional love. Why would I create resolutions from my ego self? Why not just surrender everything and give everything for God? And that's all a beautiful thing if you can do it. And, you know, there is this common belief that the ego self is completely separate from the divine self and that we should totally dismiss the ego self and just listen to the divine self. Only listen only for the the source of unconditional love and compassion. Listen only for the voice of God. So in a world of dichotomy, and multiplicity, which is this world that we live in, there is some validity to that. But what about in this world of unity where la ilaha illallah, there is nothing only the one. Everything is a reflection of God. One of our favorite or my favorite affirmations that I like to use on our calls a lot. I am a, a, a what do I say, an expression, (laughs) I think about it, an expression of divine love. And you're welcome to repeat that. I am an expression of divine love. I am a reflection of divine light. I am a manifestation of divine beauty. This is breath of spirit. We are breath of spirit breathed into these physical bodies. And we are on this journey as spiritual beings in these physical bodies on this planet Earth. We are on this journey to know the truth of who and what we are, to know ourselves as this beautiful divine spark. So how does the I want to lose 20 pounds this year have anything to do with listening to the voice of spirit and surrendering to the will of God? Well, it's very simple, (laughs) and that's what we're going to talk about today. So before we get into the discussion of it, let's go ahead and come into our prayer and healing circle and do our beginning meditation and join us all together as one heart, one light, one reflection of the light of the one one manifestation of unconditional love, one expression of divine beauty. 
Let's come into our prayer and healing circle, sitting side by side, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, knee to knee. Coming together. And let's take a moment, take a full and gentle breath together. And as we exhale, let's bring our hearts to face the center of our circle. In the name of the one most merciful ever compassionate. In the name of the one most merciful ever compassionate. And as we focus on breath, and come together, join together to call on our source, the source of divine light, source of unconditional love, the source of eternal compassion. Let's just, as you breathe, turn that funnel of energy at the front of your heart space, your heart center, Turn that to face into the center of our circle and bring all of your senses as best you can to be present in, with the center of our circle and even your belly, your belly space. Bring your belly space to face toward the center of our circle and come together with all that we have and call on our source, calling on that source of unconditional love that source of divine light, and call on the essence. Just imagine or perceive in whatever way you do this stream, this vibration of pure divine light streaming into the center of our circle, bringing us and merging us all together as one. But we are individuals, we are one. We call on this essence of divine light We call on this essence of unconditional love. We call on this essence of eternal compassion, the existence of compassion that exists far beyond our realm of time and space. This is the meaning of eternal. Exists far beyond anything that we can perceive from this realm. And it is is the ocean that we're born into that encompasses and contains this realm it is eternal compassion let's begin to breathe in this vibration as it fills the center of our circle fills all of the center of our circle with this essence of divine light unconditional love eternal compassion and breathe this in let that funnel at the center of your heart space be like a mouthpiece and face directly into this ocean of divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion, and breathe this into your heart center. Breathe this into your heart center, letting it fill your heart and resonate with this high vibration of divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion. Resonate all through your heart space, filling your entire core with this vibration of divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion. And as you exhale, relax, release, and let your heart space become soft. The poet Rumi says, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers that you have built against it. So allow these places that hold on to the barriers, allow the barriers and the blocks to be washed and cleansed from your heart space. As you exhale, allow that wave of your exhale to be returned into the ocean, the ocean of eternal compassion, the ocean of unconditional love and divine light. Let it carry with it all of the blocks and barriers that you have built against love so that your heart can be pure and open and receiving, receiving of this pure essence of divine light, unconditional love and eternal compassion. Let yourself breathe this in. Let it fill all of your heart space and let your consciousness just drop into your heart center and allow allow yourself to be carried into the depths of your heart. 
and kind of lean back toward your spine, toward the front of your spine, and let your inhale carry you back to into your vertical core, that core spirit, that pure essence of light and love and compassion is the breath of spirit that is breathed into you that is still present at your core, that is the truth of who and what you are. And breathe into that and let your conscious body just drop into this ocean, this ocean inside. I like to make a prayer that says, help me to see through your eyes, to hear through your ears, and to understand with your heart of love and compassion. Continue with that breath, breathing in. And as this vibration resonates throughout all of your core and through your heart center, let it infuse this high vibration of divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion into all of your fluids, all of your air, all of your tissues to circulate throughout all of your body and invite every cell of your body. As every cell in your body carries consciousness, it carries knowing. Let it open and receive this vibration, this essence of divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion. Let every cell, the consciousness of every cell of your body, every fiber of your being, also be cleansed with this wave of divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion. Breathing this in, allowing each and every cell of your body to breathe this in, allowing the consciousness to be cleansed, to be purified, to be returned to its original knowing, the original knowing of truth, of who and what you are, this essence of divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion. And I invite you to continue with that breath. I'm going to talk about how (laughs) our resolutions to lose weight, to eat better, to exercise, to find our beloved relationships or to heal our relationships with our families or to have a family. Our resolutions to live a life of purpose or to have more abundance or financial stability. These are our, our common resolutions. And what have they got to do with becoming one with our source? How do these daily life ego things tie in to just being one with the ocean of divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion? Our human journey is one of first forgetting who we are. We are this breath of spirit breathed into this physical form. And as breath of spirit in physical form, this consciousness, this is what gives us consciousness and gives us life, and we are integrated into these physical bodies for this earth journey. And as part of this earth journey, you hear it called the hero's journey or the heroine's journey, we're we're out, we move out away from our divinity. We first forget who and what we are. We begin to perceive and experience this world through our human senses and our human perceptions and our human bodies. And we start to forget, we go through a process of forgetting the divine realms, and identifying with the physical realms. And this is by design. We forget who we are as divine beings of love only to get eventually to a point where 
we can no longer live in the perceived separation, perceiving ourselves as only material, only physical, and we want to find our way back. When we get to those places, it may be, you know, it's something that happens that wakes us up, either an illness or a relationship problem or a financial problem or a trauma, something that happens that says, wait a minute, this is not honoring the truth of who and what I am. I've got to heal myself. I've got to find a way to return to truth because this is not it. It just becomes so obvious through some, usually, often, a catastrophe, a tragedy, that we say, wait a minute, this can't be right. And so when we come to this place of wanting to heal, this is that turning point that returns us or starts us on the journey to return back, to rediscover and remember on an internal cellular consciousness way the truth of who and what we are and to return to be one with our source. So to make these resolutions, what does that have to do with the returning? Well, number one, it's natural to want more, to have that yearning, that yearning that draws us. It's part of what's built into us. And to really get into the, like, how these particular resolutions come into play for us, I want to talk for a minute about the creation of Adam, Adam the first earthling. And as C.D., my teacher, says, we are all Adam. This breath of spirit is said that, you know, when, when God created Adam, and Adam in subtle body before physical body, Adam, you know, the, the original was just one that was neither male or female. The the um, separation of male and female came later. But the Adam, the first earthling, when Adam was created, God breathed the breath of spirit into Adam to give him life. And with that breath, breathed in the knowing of the names of everything, all of the divine names, the divine attributes, the qualities, the attributes of God, and the names of everything in creation was breathed into Adam. All of that knowing breathed into this subtle body. And in order, like initially, when the human, the earthling, was created, this breath of spirit is so exquisite and this all-encompassing, all-knowing is so exquisite that Adam is in bliss. And why would Adam want to turn to the creation at all when Adam is in bliss with the spirit of the one? What is said uh, in the Quran, there is a passage that says that Everything in creation was offered the trust. And most scholars, as far as I know, agree that the trust means the gift of free will. Everything in creation, human beings have free will. It is said that everything in creation was offered the trust of free will. But none took it except for the human being. Because Everything in creation knew that they could not live a higher existence, a better existence, other than one that was completely aligned and immersed in the will of God. So everything just wanted to be at one with the will of God. But the human beings accepted the trust, which 
I don't know, just in, from my perspective, it's more like a challenge, right? It's like we accepted the challenge that we would take on this trust of free will and that we would go on this journey that we human beings have the opportunity to go on and experience in this earth realm, that we would go on this journey of forgetting. I can't, I can't help but think of it as like the ultimate reality show, right, where you're dropped on this deserted planet here <laughs> you're dropped in this planet and not only do you have to survive but you have to forget who you are and what you are and where you came from and all of these other things and go out on this journey and then like figure out find your way back right then once you realize that oh by the way i have forgotten and <laughs> at first we don't even know that there's anything to forget right but in a way we do you know, in a big way, we do really. But we find that yearning to return, and that's our signal. But everything in creation was offered this trust, and the human beings accepted it. But just being in bliss, you know, Adam being in bliss, not wanting. I mean, there's nothing to say, okay, I... I I would, I mean, you know, can you imagine if we were just in bliss with the love of God at all times? We wouldn't want to be any part of this earth. And yet we're here in these earth bodies and we do have to make this journey and we do have to survive while we're here. We're hardwired for survival. That's part of it too. But in order to turn the earthling away from the oneness and immersion in God's love, and turn us to the creation to play out this journey and this trust of free will. God gave three things. The first thing is the need to eat and defecate, which gives us what? It gives us our connection to body, our connection to the earth, our connection to food, sustenance, nurturing, provision, right? And what are the, the most common resolutions, New Year's resolutions that you hear? Well, I want to have a better relationship with food. I want to lose weight. I want to have better digestion, better health. I want better self-care. I want to exercise more, right? You know, I want to lose 10 pounds, 10 pounds, eat better, exercise. These are That's the most common resolution, and that is said to be the first thing that God gave us to turn us away from the divinity and toward the creation so that we could play out this free will. The second thing was the desire to make love and to procreate. And what did this give us? This gives us relationship to each other and all of the dynamics that play out in relationships. It gives us the desire for a beloved beloved relationship, the desire for family. Right? And, and what's one of the things that that we desire as human beings? I mean, one of the, one of the biggest and our next biggest opportunity is that opportunity for relationship, healing relationships, having better relationships, finding relationships, healing relationships with our, our families, our children, or having children. And the third thing is the desire to be king, which is that desire for empowerment, for power, for purpose, for autonomy, for independence, for um, provision, financial wealth, abundance. It is that, you know, that's another one of the re resolutions. Well, I want to find my purpose. I want to know my purpose. I want to live my purpose. I want to heal my money issues. I want to get out of debt. I want to have more abundance in my life. I want to be of, of, of purpose and service. And in a way, I mean, look at how many people do things like what I'm doing right now. They they leave the corporate world and they want to find the job that is their purpose and they want to find a way to make a money, uh, you know, make money out of it and to to support themselves as they are in service, right? And there's a big, huge conflict that can come up around all of that, all right? How do I be in service and still make money and support myself, or can it be, you know, is it holy or is it is it spiritual to want to be wealthy? Big, big challenges come up around that, right? So when you look at the three things 
that God gave to turn Adam, the first earthling in all of us, we are all all Adam, to turn us away from immersion in the divine and toward the earth, toward the material, so that we can play out these journeys. They're totally, totally, totally related to our common resolutions that we make year after year after year. And embedded in each one of these is our challenge on how we're going to learn to navigate this journey and ultimately to not make separation between the earth ego and the spiritual journey. Because none of these is bad. We think, you know, okay, Food bad, sex bad, money bad, right? But none of them are bad. And we can view our relationships to food, to our bodies, to our sustenance, to our provision. We can view our relationships to sex, intimacy, our, our relationships with each other, our intimate and family relationships. We can view our relationships to money, power, autonomy, purpose. All of these can be a way to know the divine, to align our humanity, to live on this planet Earth, in this world, aligned with the divine. C.D., my teacher, talked of this as being in the world, but not of the world. To clean our qualities, our attributes, those attributes of God that are breathed into us, those names that are breathed into us, the 99 names of God as we were often using these qualities as as in our practices here. To all of these qualities are already within us. They're breathed into us. They're an internal knowing that we're born with. And every one of these qualities is reflected to us through some aspect of this world the internal qualities, and they usually have been, you know, we're seeing them filtered through many layers that, you know, the internal layer is the divine layer, and then the external layer is the ego layer, and we're seeing them through the many layers so that they're reflecting things back to us that often the reflection looks as if it's something unpleasant and negative. But tracing back through the layers, everything is a a reflection of something of the divine on the inside. So to clean our qualities means to clear through all of these layers so that we are seeing that reflection through the lens of the divine reality within that is breathed into us through our source. And this is what it means to live in that harmony and unity with unconditional love and compassion and divine light. So I invite you at this time to again take a breath, breathing in that essence of divine light, unconditional love and eternal compassion. Breathe this in. And what is it in your heart that is yearning to return and to return you back to oneness with your source, with your original knowing, that breath of spirit inside of you that was breathed into you by your source, that was breathed into Adam, into every earthling. Because truly, This desire to lose 10 pounds, 20 pounds, the desire to find your beloved, your intimate relationship, the desire to live a life of purpose and financial health and provision and stability. All of these are pathways that you can travel to know the divine essence within you. So what is that for you? What is the pathway that your heart is calling you to travel 
over this coming year, or at least at this time. Every one of these pathways will reflect for you many of the qualities, the attributes of God that is breathed into you. And each and every one of these is an opportunity for you to see those reflections and clean through those layers, to cleanse and purify those layers within yourself so that you come to live in alignment and in harmony and in unity with the divine within you. So find that place in your heart. What is that for you? And allow yourself just to feel as best you can. And if your thoughts are driving the conversation that's going on for you, that's okay. Just allow yourself to be present with those thoughts. And take a breath. And let yourself, if you can, drop beneath the thoughts. And allow yourself to feel. What is it that you're feeling? If you can just be with, are there sensations in your body? Can you feel your heart? And allow yourself to feel. And if you have an intention that you would like to make or a resolution, that you would already know what that is for you, I invite you to offer that into the center of our circle, into this ocean of light and love and compassion. Or just speak directly to your source. My beloved. Here is what I feel is in my heart. And I bring this to you and I ask for your help. Remember, we're given free will. The help is abundant. The help is totally surrounding us and immersed in us and carrying us and supporting us at all times. But because we have free will, we have to ask. Part of that asking is about getting clear for ourselves. When we get clear within ourselves, it opens up that pathway for us to receive. And when we get clear, even if we're not clear, if we're clear that we're not clear, You can still come with that and just turn as if you're face to face with your source and say, this is what I, this is what I'm feeling and I'm wanting to align with you. I'm wanting to live according to what you want for me. So I bring what I have and I turn to you and I face you and I say, this is, this is what I've got and I invite you into my heart. And I ask for your help. I invite you into my life and I ask for your guidance. Please help me. Please guide me. Please show me. Please shepherd me. And allow that to come in. Allow that to be a part of your life, of your consciousness. And allow yourself to feel. Because underneath the feeling, within the feeling inside of yourself. It's like that feeling is the doorway to recognize and acknowledge your basic human needs as a human on this earth journey. Your basic human needs inside your heart. And allow yourself to be okay with that because you're created In that way, give yourself the love, the politeness, the acceptance. Be kind and gentle with your own heart and let that lead you to a greater self-acceptance and a, a gentle and loving honesty with your source. Let that part of you open to face your source and invite your source into that place 
to be witnessed in your true, authentic, lovingly honest place. And again, ask for help, ask for guidance. We have free will, and we have to ask. And within that place, that basic human need, another layer deeper is that place that yearns to return through these various qualities of love, Compassion, forgiveness, generosity, abundance, beauty. There's a place that yearns to return. So allow yourself to feel the yearning inside of you. Acknowledge this and again face to face with your source. Allow this part of you to be witnessed. To be witnessed by the one who already knows. And let that part open up and invite your source into that place to witness you in your yearning to return. And that yearning is like a tractor beam that draws in that connection with your source, that draws in that divine light, that unconditional love, and that eternal compassion. and carries you home, home to that place that already knows where that breath of spirit was breathed into you to give you the knowing of the truth of who and what you are. Breathe in, breathe in through that pathway, breathing in and welcoming in your source as you allow yourself to be witnessed, allow yourself to open, to ask for guidance, to ask for clarity, to ask for help, and allow that to come all the way in and all the way through, to open that pathway. Breathe in and let yourself really settle into your core, drop into your core, drop into your body. And that place inside of you, let that yearning be filled. Let it be, let the call inside of you be answered. Feel it solidly inside your core of your being. And let that knowing, as that call inside of you is answered and that knowing inside of you is reawakened, becomes stronger, more solid, and brighter, becomes a solid part of your consciousness, of your awareness, and let that knowing emanate throughout the consciousness of every cell of your being. So it becomes a part of you, a part of the truth of who and what you are. And your source knows what the answers are for you, what your heart is yearning for. When you know yourself in a conscious way, cellular consciousness kind of way, as a part of your source, a breath of spirit, a reflection of divine light, an expression of unconditional love, a manifestation of divine beauty. The other things fall into place. And of course, there are things that you can begin to 
bring into awareness and alignment on the outer. It will help to establish a supportive environment for you to live out these yearnings, what you yearn for that shows up for you as how to make a New Year's resolution this year. The outer work can be done and it's much easier to, you know, you don't want to make the same resolutions year after year after year and never make any lasting transformation. This is what gives you the ability to make the lasting transformation so that you can put the things in place in your outer world to support the changes that you wish to make. The changes come from within and then they emanate outward and give you the strength and the power to make the changes in your world that you can stick to and have lasting transformation in your life. So again, breathing in that essence of divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion. And as you exhale, bring your heart face-to-face with your source and just take a moment and say thank you. Say thank you. And take another breath and just wiggle your toes and your feet and feel your connection with the earth. Feel your presence all the way into your toes and into the bottoms of your feet connected into the earth. Feel your presence in all of your physical body. And take another breath and stretch out your arms and feel your presence all the way into your fingers and the palms of your hands. And take another breath. Feel your presence all the way into all of your senses and your head and all through your core. And I know this was a quick a quick process. You're welcome to listen to this recording as many times as you'd like. And if you still need support, by all means, please reach out to me. You can schedule a a 30-minute consult with me, a free consult with me through my website at joyfullylivingwellness.com. And I'd be happy to support you on what some next steps may be for you. And happy to uh, work with you as well. And with that, we'll bring this part of the call to a close. If you're Uh, listening to the recording or leaving us at this time, you're invited to join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Pacific Time in the United States. And uh, if you join us live, you can stay on for the Q&A and give your comments, your support, or receive support to ask questions, whatever it is that you have. You can find the information on how to join us at the website, joyfullylivingwellness.com. And you can also, uh, while you're there, pick up your copy of the 10 Spiritual Principles of Our Human Existence to learn more about what this work is based on, what this information is based on. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording.